is a huge honor today to be interviewing Dr. Liviu Steyer all the way from Germany where it's uh, 10 o'clock at night. Uh, it's only 2 o'clock in the afternoon here. Uh, thank you for staying up late tonight. I'm going to definitely put you past your bedtime, uh, keeping you on the phone for an hour. But I was so excited um, to get to uh, talk to you and interview to you, uh, to all my listeners, because evidence-based dentistry is is something new. It's something that's coming about. It, it's more um, – took off more in the United States with uh, oncology and cancer years ago, but it's kind of coming to dentistry and you're an, you have a lot of thoughts and a lot of uh, um, you're very well into evidence-based dentistry. Uh, and with, well, what do you, what, what do you think of the evidence-based dentistry movement? Um, for the moment, one of the biggest problems with evidence-based dentistry is the fact that clinicians are requested to, uh, join decision making protocols based on evidence based evidence base while every critical appraisal of the evidence has not been taught so far in universities um, it is more an issue and a topic of postgrad education um, the evidence we have today available is in dentistry, especially, for example, the one in endodontics is more an in our, is based upon um, uh, in vitro studies and the clinicians are uh, misled to believe that application of um, the results from in vitro studies uh, can be taken one to one uh, and um, it leads to um, to a bias in clinical dentistry and especially here in decision making protocols in uh, uh, endodontics. Can you give an example of that? Uh, sure. Um, for example, one of the simplest uh, one of the simplest decision uh, which a clinician has to take is to understand today uh, in endodontics, for example, um, single file systems. Uh, industry is pushing extremely heavy um, the clinicians to believe that um, using buying one simple single file, they could uh, solve uh, all the all the cases um, in daily practice, um, a fact which is almost um, proven by um, by by the studies by the in vitro studies as well that um, one single file cannot solve um, not all the cases and uh, surely. Um, should be reserved to a very restricted uh, number of cases. And a single file technique is not available at all. You will always have to use um, additional files to the one which is presented and pushed um, by the industry. So you're saying that not all the advertisements we see in dentistry are true? Correct. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Correct. And, um, you know, I think evidence-based dentistry could have taken off a long time ago because all these dentists are entering uh, digital computers uh, that, that, that they did the treatment. And, and if we would have been entering what materials we used, we would have had samples that went over a million, you know, samples, you know, right out of the gate. But we, we don't seem to capture this data as an industry, do we? Uh, it's absolutely it's absolutely correct. The problem which we will be facing, which started already, is of course the high level of litigation um, based on um, this misbeliefs or uh, biased decisions um, and um, it is. The dentists are, 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 losing, are, are losing the confidence. Um, and I believe this is also very bad uh, from an ethical point of view for our patients. I, I, I think it's crazy in the year 2015. I just read a study that showed that if you uh, were treated for cancer at a really famous cancer institution like Mayo Clinic or um, 
um, something like that, that you got a 10% higher survival rate than if you were treated in a, in a, like a Medicare or a Medicaid clinic. And it's like, um, gosh, you would think that the, the absolute best protocol for a cancer should be mathematically based on all the data and there, there wouldn't be much thought involved. You know what I mean? Uh, yes. You are talking. You are talking now. You 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 very correctly brought in um, the topic of statistics, and based on these statistics, the cal uh, calculation of probabilities. Um, if we try to to make a parallel and to identify um, case studies, uh, which um, well, uh, in in vivo studies. Um, for the survival, survival of uh, root canal treated teas um, or uh, survival of, of other topics in dentistry. And uh, we would like to base, um, up to, to build a probability calculation, decision trees, um, a, Markov, uh, a Markov model uh, for decision. Um, this will be almost impossible because uh, we do not have sufficient data uh, to support this uh, probability calculation. Uh, what we do today is we make a lot of shortcuts. These are uh, shortcuts uh, uh, ad modum. Uh, uh, we are all familiar with the book uh, of, of uh, uh, Daniel Kahneman, uh, Thinking Slow, Thinking Fast, and we are doing heuristics, and all our decisions are, are heuristics, gut feeling, and uh, we try to, we, we are supposed also to make, to, to go into this shared decision making with our patients. We do not know what uh, uh, the data, what the evidence is, and um, to, call it, uh, to call it a shared decision with a patient, um, it is quite difficult um, if not to say it is not, it is not real. Same as in, 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 if you go into cancers, well, I'm a little bit familiar due to the fact that I have an uh, on, uh, oncologist um, uh, in, my, in my very close family uh, from the U.S. And I know, for example, that um, a lot is done to replace, uh, uh, to replace with this new uh, uh, proton therapy uh, um, and there is no, there are no facts to prove that it is uh, um, that it will prolong life uh, m more. It is only the fact that it will give probably less side effects. So um, evidence based, the way it is presented currently, um, it is misleading. And I, from an ethic ethical point of view, uh, it is somehow um, cheating uh, and destroying the, the relation, the credibility of the profession and uh, the relation between patient and uh, professional. I think Germany is uh, at least 10 years ahead of the, the rest of the world and definitely the United States because I, I see it in oral surgery. Um, oral surgeons in Germany use data on whether or not they should pull wisdom teeth, and they hardly pull a fraction of the wisdom teeth that the Americans pull, whereas the Americans, insurance coverage at 100%, they just pull everyone's wisdom teeth. And I, I'm a victim of this. Um, I'm 53, so when the first time I went to the doctor with a sore throat, you know, they, they yanked my tonsils and adenoids out, and they, they pulled everybody's tonsils and adenoids in the 60s, and, yes. now, and now in 2015, they don't pull your tonsils just because the insurance will pay for it. So do you think the United States uh, pulls too many wisdom, extracts too many wisdom teeth prophylactically and don't have the evidence to support the need for doing it? The, um, if we, um, I would like to open a, a, a parenthesis here. The, the Cochrane Library um, has already um, brought uh, or made um, the statement that um, coronoectomies, for wisdom teas uh, are indeed a, 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 a viable alternative to um, wisdom tooth extraction. Um, yes, uh, I believe all around the world uh, extraction of wisdom teas um, is overemphasized um, due to uh, monetary uh, reasons. 
are there any other things that you see in the same boat as um, treatments that are overutilized that don't really have the science to back it and it probably has done more for economic incentives as opposed to scientific research? I am, um, um, you may be familiar or uh, uh, the listeners might be, might be familiar with um, the old um, Gold Cast uh, Academy uh, um, founded by, by, uh, uh, by, by Dr. Tucker uh, in Seattle. Um, well, um, this was a very conservative and still continues to be an extremely conservative and long-lasting treatment. Um, what we have today, uh, this push into CAT-CAM and this push into ceramics, um, into, um, in, in, into, into the CAT-CAM technology of ceramics, um, has already changed uh, tremendously. For example, the fitting um, and the requests for fitting um, of uh, margins uh, compared to the old uh, gold restoration. Um, now suddenly these uh, margins, um, which um, bigger margins are acceptable simply to, due to the fact that uh, they are glued in uh, with resins. Um, yes, there are a lot of changes which um, are not all to the absolute benefit of the patient. So um, you talked about the difference in uh, the pros and cons of gold going to ceramic. Um, yes. What, what, continue with uh, amalgam silver mercury filling versus composite. I know that uh, Europe has had some, some differing views on the use of mercury because it yes. seems to me the research is clear that amalgams last longer than composites. Would you agree with that statement or not? Uh, I personally have um, stopped uh, utilizing um, amalgam restorations. Uh, my last amalgam restoration I've placed was uh, back in 1994. Um, Sweden was uh, Sweden and Japan was were indeed among the forefront fighters. Uh, for the uh, to abolish uh, the utilization of uh, amalgams, um, I do not see um, the toxicity of the amalgam restoration as such. What I do indeed recognize is uh, that um, aging of amalgam restorations indeed lead uh, to uh, based upon the mechanical properties like creep and flow uh, to more fra cusp fracture um, if not correctly uh, placed and if the indication is overstretched meaning that the isthmus it's, uh, the, 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 the width of the isthmus of the restoration is indeed more than just one third um, of the uh, of the width of the uh, of the tools. So, so I would say um, correct indication, correct indication, um, and correct use uh, of amalgam restoration um, does for sure uh, su still support the use of amalgam restoration. So, where do you think evidence-based dentistry is going? What, where, what do you think will be the changes that we'll see over the next 5, 10, 20 years uh, with evidence-based dentistry? Do you think it will get more important and grow, or do you think it will be marginalized uh, to the side? If we uh, look a little bit uh, aside and we consider uh, what's going on with artificial intelligence, uh, with um, decision uh, decision making based uh, on this artificial intelligence, uh, like um, we already have this in in in, in Perio, um, then yes, I believe that um, the decision um, what approach what to save or to extract to crown or not to crown to post or not to post to root canal or not to root canal to um, whatever, the decision making will be based upon um, other criteria than um, the empiric criteria we are, utilize, we, are, we are using today and we are applying today. 
um, more of the decision will more of the decision making will be taken away from the clinician and it will be implemented in software it will be implemented um, in other tools uh, being taken away uh, from the from the practitioner who will just become more or less um, the executing machines or of this uh, decision making artificial intelligence decision making and who who will be leading the way will this be led by certain countries or governments or private sector i mean who, who's leading the evidence-based dentistry movement today uh, for the moment, for the moment, we are. Um, it, it is quite confusing. Um, in uh, in medicine, the Cochrane library, the Cochrane library, and um, Cochrane um, is more or less um, the highest um, the highest level uh, of, uh, of 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 evidence. Uh, of acceptable evidence, you have this pyramid of evidence, and uh, so uh, systematic analysis, uh, uh, and uh, uh, systematic reviews, and meta analysis uh, is uh, is among the highest level of evidence currently. Um, we d cannot really apply uh, Cochrane criteria, or for example, critical appraisal tools like the Pico tools uh, for for dentistry. Uh, we do not have. Uh, there is very scarce evidence or de for uh, clinical for clinical studies. Uh, new materials are new materials, new instruments, new techniques are introduced into dentistry, um, and um, there is no evidence. Uh, evidence is built up once the instrument, the technology, the material is already in the market and not prior. Yes, like you do not have a study a study phase one two like uh, in, in like in pharmaceuticals. Um, it is currently very very misleading. And uh, if you look into the journal uh, into the journal of the uh, American Association uh, uh, into of, of, uh, of the ADA uh, American Association of Dentistry, then you will see that. Um, they are talking and they are bringing um, how new papers on how to implement evidence into clinical practice, but they do not help you um, by offering um, by offering the studies and the tools to apply um, the the available data for your clinical case. So um, for the moment, everything is very misleading and uh, confusing. Um, I would I would suggest to allow uh, and to teach the clinician uh, and the clinicians more uh, in regards of appraisal of of of, <laughs> of scientific of scientific uh, of scientific data uh, to teach them and. I would like to see also on the different forums now available uh, more than just the presentation of how I solved this case and how I solved uh, uh, of herodontics, uh, as we call it, to see more discussions on um, the decision um, and the choice uh, for for a technique, for an approach, for 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 a restoration, for for whatever the choice how you came to the result how did you based on what criteria have been this or that uh, approach chosen this is what we are what we are lacking yeah you still hear dennis all the time say well this is what works for me yes and it's like well if it's is not this evidence yeah is is this repeatable um how do you think um and back to the advertisements uh, like you look at implants they'll say well i have a 97 percent success rate with this implant but all the implants replaced only in the lower anterior mandible. Uh, there were no implants placed in the maxilla or, you know, or with people who had periodontal disease or, you know, so yeah, I see that all the time. How do you think a dentist could, uh, you're talking to thousands of dentists, um, how could a dentist listening to you become a better critical thinker and have better critical appraisal skills? How, how could she develop these skills better? Um, afraid 
the recipe uh, is not uh, in um, self-education. The recipe lies in um, comprehensive educational programs. Um, universities um, should uh, um, offer open courses. Um, online is fine um, to allow to allow the clinician continue his uh, his activity. Uh, I believe these uh, uh, MOOCs. Um, like Coursera and uh, um, um, Udacity or, uh, will um, manage to enter also uh, the market and will open doors um, for um, this kind of education for our fellow colleagues. In Europe, we have in UK for the moment the Learn Forum. Um, so... Yes, there, this is the way. Uh, this is the way. Online education is changing the face of university, uh, of of the universities. You may have, you may be, uh, you may be aware that, for example, uh, open universities in UK um, have closed, have almost uh, closed down two thirds of their uh, of their capacities due to the big competition uh, by online by online uh, courses, open online courses, massive online courses. Um, so yes, this is the way I believe it should go. You said MMOC, the OCs for online courses. What's the MM stand for? Uh, massive, uh, uh, massive online open courses. Huh, interesting. And, uh, and do you think some countries are using evidence-based dentistry more than others? And if so, why do you think some countries, like why do German oral surgeons extract less wisdom tooth than American oral surgeons? How, how, how do you... Which countries do you think are leading that, and why do you think they're leading that? Um, it is difficult. It is difficult. I, I do not. I do not owe the uh, the the data uh, on the topic of uh, uh, of oral um, of oral surgeons. Um, as you know, here in Germany, um, we do have um, two different ways uh, of qualification for oral surgery. There is. Um, the simple oral surgeon, meaning the, uh, the dental school graduate who continued uh, a residency in oral surgery, he will perform the minor surgery. Uh, and we do have the Max Fax surgeons who, um, who graduated medical and dental school, and in addition, they have this Max Fax uh, 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 continue uh, this Max Fax residency and education. Um, wisdom to you know, the clinicians or the the the, uh, the general practitioners are referring um, youngsters and um, adults for wisdom tools extraction to to max fax surgeons um and here there this this is performed under um anesthesia under full sedation which is a problem and we do see a lot of uh, post surgical trauma of the uh, of TMJ due to the fact that the ligaments are overstretched because all four wisdom teeth are uh, removed in one session uh, and this is um, quite traumatic for the for, for, for the for the for the TMJ um, I do not really owe the data to make the difference and to say in in one country uh, more with, uh, there is more there are more wisdom tooth extraction than in the other. Um, I believe it is a problem um, also due to the number of of um, of professionals out there. Um, it is difficult to compare numbers. I do not. I, I'm not sure we do have uh, co uh, numbers which compare the the, the outcomes and the, the 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 cases in the different countries. You've uh, you've been published so many times in, uh, especially in endodontics and ozone. Yes. Um, what, yeah. what what do you what could you share about all your extensive endodontic knowledge? Um, what what what's what's hot? What's not? What 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 should people doing root canals be thinking about today? Number one, do not, do not believe that 
by um, using rotary files, um, you have solved the case. Um, rotary, the, the root canal, the, the shaping mechanism, uh, either manual or rotary, is just a tool to um, help and allow for irrigation. So um, there should be the pearls of endodontic, the pearls of endodontic success should be um, chemical disinfection, uh, number one, and number two, um, sealing, coronal, and apical sealing. Um, and uh, number three uh, is understanding the coronal restoration in um, terms of forces, of mechanics. If you follow these four points, then um, you will benefit uh, of, a, you will be able to raise the success, uh, the success rate in your clinical practice. So you said number one was chemical disinfection, two yes. was apical sealing? Coronal and apical sealing. Okay, what was three? Uh, cor the coronal, the coronal restore, the coronal restore, the the, uh, the coronal restoration. Yes. And what was four? Was there four, uh, or just three? Just three. Yes. Okay. So, so what should they? So you're saying that you know it doesn't matter if it's manual file or rotary file. The only thing the file is doing is opening up a space to get the chemical disinfection down there. And, and, exactly. And and, and what? And root canal obturation material. Yes, the sealing. And, and what? And what do you um? What should they know about chemical disinfection? What what chemical disinfections do you like? How long does it need to be in there? Is there? Um, so if we go back into into what we what we discussed at the beginning when we said that um, this concept of single file is not of is not is not true as 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 a concept because you will always use more files. This concept of uh, saving time by using just one single file um, is already um, not, uh, cannot be validated. Um, if you have um, a vital case, the chemical disinfection protocol will be completely different than uh, in a case, uh, in a, in, in a non-vital case. Um, you will, you have to use other, other, other irrigant protocol, a different irrigant protocol. Um, you will use um, different instruments and materials to um, help and increase the efficacy of the, of the irrigants in the root canal. Um, the time frame will be longer um, as such. So it is a complete different, it is, you have to divide and, and, and to split between uh, simple, simple anatomy on one side and complicated anatomy on the other side. Number two, you will have to divide between um, vital cases and non-vital cases. Uh, in the non-vital cases, you will have again to divide uh, um, we do know uh, there are there are there is for example data that upper molars uh, eighty six percent of upper molars um, have somehow an an, an involvement uh, in, uh, in in MSDOs. Uh, so um, are you prepared for this case? Um, how are you performing this case? How will you, um, how will you solve the case? Um, so uh, irrigation, chemical disinfection is not, it, it is not a topic which has been completely elaborated. Uh, we have, when we discuss about sodium hypochlorate, uh, you will find the, the, uh, the, the ones who will tell you just use up to 1.5 uh, and uh, up to 1.5 uh, um, uh, percent due to the uh, cytotoxicity. Other ones will tell you no use 5.5 percent and heat it up. Uh, then you'll have the ones who will tell you um, don't use, don't use uh, sodium hypochlorite uh, in those and those area due to the cytotoxicity and possible emphysema. Um, there is so much, uh, so much going on and this is exactly coming back into what we were talking. The evidence, there is no final evidence 
uh, for that. It is still a problem uh, uh, in the decision-making protocol and we have to help support the, cl the clinicians out there in building these uh, decision-making protocols and in helping them uh, deciding and appraising uh, what kind of case they have, B, what would be the best solution for their case based on evidence, based on their own expertise, on their knowledge, uh, on their technology, and so on. So where do you think the evidence lies now on those three areas? Chemical disinfection uh, for vital versus non-vital, uh, coronal sealing, apical, and the coronal uh, restoration. Uh, where, what, what do you think? What, where do you think the evidence is overwhelming that we should be doing something, a certain protocol? Let's start with the easiest. I would say coronal sealing. In the coronal sealing, I will definitely say adhesive seal. You'd say what seal? Adhesive seal. Okay. Adhesives. Okay. Uh, in, the, in the apical seal, we still have big, um, big legs. Um, I would, uh, for the moment, we know that a three-dimensional root canal obturation um, would be, uh, is, is the best way to go. We do not have the perfect uh, material for a root canal obturation. We cannot have a perfect um, adhesive seal in the root canal uh, due to the um, configuration factor and and so on uh, shrinking and 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 other fact and other uh, shortcomings uh, which are material based um, in the disinfection um, the best the best the best way to do is for sure time take your time use fresh um, sodium hypochlorite uh, sodium hypochlorite, um, depending on the case, vital or non-vital, you may uh, use different concentrations. Uh, you may want to use, to energize the solution um, to make sure that um, the penetration capacity into the dentinal tubules uh, is uh, uh, granted. Um, there will be um, other um, additional uh, disinfection uh, mechanism which you will want uh, to use uh, like from photoactivated disinfection to uh, ozone uh, from um, um, a variety of uh, irrigants uh, from, uh, neg from, from, from uh, negative apical uh, pressure, uh, pressure to to the PUI technique. So there are many ways which you could uh, help and enhance um, the, the penetration of the irrigant in the canal. Make sure, number one, that um, you, you give the, the needed time. Um, and um, yes, basically these are the best, the best tips I could give a clinician uh, for his practice for tomorrow. So will you go back and talk more about how you irrigate differently for a vital versus a non-vital? You're saying that it's a lot, it takes a lot more to kill the bacteria in a non-vital infection. So do you use a stronger sodium hypochlorite? And how much longer do you use? What, what, is, what is the difference in your protocol between vital and non-vital? In a vital, we have to understand that in a vital case, the infection is more in the coronal uh, in the coronal part um, so um, this is probably number uh, this is probably the biggest difference uh, the biggest difference then um, in a non in a non vital in a non vital case indeed i will i, I use um, a higher concentration uh, i use 5.5 um, heated uh, uh, 50 50 degrees uh, uh, um, Celsius heated uh, uh, sodium hypochlorite. Um, I do use, I, I build up my um, shaping. Uh, I have a shaping protocol and I have, uh, this is what we, what, what, what we also, uh, what we also teach. Um, we have the shaping protocol 
uh, complemented by continuous irrigation with uh, sodium hypochlorate. And then there is a final phase of chemical, uh, of chemical disinfection. Here, of course, uh, you have to address uh, organic and non-organic uh, non components, meaning sodium hypochlorate versus EDTA. Uh, do not forget that uh, the, the, the combination of sodium hypochlorite and EDTA will um, reduce uh, the, 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 the efficacy of, uh, of the solutions. Um, then um, there is indeed, uh, in addition, we, I'm, I, I prefer today uh, to use uh, photoactivated disinfection um, in the last part of the chemical disinfection protocol. And um, last but not least, um, the application of um, uh, chlorhexidine, not so much for, the chemical for, for its chemical disinfection, but uh, for the inhibition of the uh, matrix metalloproteinases, so the MMPs, which are uh, leading to, um, which can induce uh, the so-called resalises, the collagenolysis in the, in the, in the, uh, 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 in the structure. Um, so basically, this is the extended irrigation protocol for a non-vital case. Um, time is, of course, also very important. In a vital case, I will not use uh, adjuvants like PAD, like photoactivated disinfectant like PAD or ozone. I would just stick to a, a classic uh, chemical disinfection protocol uh, as already discussed. And what is this uh, photoactivating disinfectant? I think a lot of our listeners have never heard of that before. Uh, photoactivated disinfection. Um, you are using um, a dye. <laughs> it's like uh, 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 different dyes, and you are bringing in um, some um, energy, light energy, and this will, um, in addition, um, so there is a very good penetration of these solutions into the dentinal tubules and the energy you will bring and you can bring you can uh, there are different there are different uh, 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 different dyes and different solutions you are basically um, producing um, an, an, an um, for a very short period of time um, uh, an O3, which manages uh, to, to, to act as a perfect, as, as a very good disinfectant. Uh, photoactivated disinfection is not new, it, and it is not particular to endodontics. You, find it, or you, you may find it in periodontology already, and its application in periimplantitis uh, is as well uh, established. Do you, do you have any brand names? How would a dentist uh, purchase this? Where would they find photoactivated disinfectants for example uh Asep in, here in germany you find it under the brand name of aseptim um helbo h-e-l-b-o um are probably the two biggest uh, uh brands here in europe you've been published so many times in endo but also ozone what, what are your thoughts on ozone um ozone's in my, uh, the problem was, uh, um, well, I still, to, ex to make it short, I still believe in the excellent ability of ozone uh, in disinfection. The only problem, um, we did a lot of research with, uh, uh, with the product uh, manufactured uh, uh, by Carvo, which was uh, uh, the Helozone. Uh, we did a lot of research uh, within um, cardiology, so uh, 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 cavity disinfection, as well as in endodontics. Um, I believe the way it was marketed that time was, uh, again, lacking uh, adequate evidence and um, it was misleading. Uh, we have seen that applying ozone to um, sodium hypochlorite 
um, it will activate much, much faster uh, the sodium hypochlorate for the uh, tissue dissolution, for its tissue dissolution ability, and one could reduce the concentration uh, of the sodium hypochlorate used for disinfection. We had, uh, we had results proving that a 1.5% solution would be sufficient, and um, Number two, the time needed um, for ozonated sodium hypochlorate would half, uh, so it would speed up the treatment as well. Um, sadly, um, technology, adequate technology for the for 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 manufacturing um, and. Um, to support the, the, the studies and the research performed um, were not adequately spread and, uh, and available. This is why probably uh, the big hype around um, the use of ozone um, cooled, uh, chilled down uh, massively. And do you see, do you think lasers will be used to clean and sterilize the inside, disinfect inside of endo? You see lasers now being used in a LANAP periodontal disease protocol where they're using the laser to disinfect. Do you think lasers have, uh, will, um, are good at disinfecting the endodontic canal? The I have personally, I have not, uh, I uh, personally, I'm not an advocate of laser, uh, of the application of lasers with the exception of lasers used uh, for, uh, for the photo activated disinfection. Um, I also have not done re sufficient research uh, on that topic. Um, I, the evidence we have on the market is uh, not yet satisfying uh, in, also in, 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 in vitro studies uh, to support, uh, but um, chances are very good that lasers um, as a supportive adjunct disinfection um, could be a valuable, especially for example, in um, non-vital cases, chronic apical pe with, uh, in cases with chronic apical periodontitis and so on. Um, I, if you would ask me today, would you invest in a laser to uh, improve the outcome of your, uh, or would, would you consider investing in a laser to raise the success rate of your root canal treatments, um, I would say no. And um, what do you, what are your, how is your mind thinking when you see a failed root canal and you've got to decide, should I redo the root canal or should I extract and go to Im an implant? What, what, are, what are you looking at to try to make that um, critical thinking, that critical analysis? Um, number one, um, we know already that um, these are facts and uh, uh, that um, implants, uh, same as natural teeth, are affected by, um, by the changes, by, the, by, by time and by the changes available within the body. Uh, so um, there is this... Um, bone modeling and remodeling process within the body. Um, and uh, due to that, we know that um, the chances for um, disease with implants um, are higher than what we thought at the beginning, when implants were placed only in the area as you uh, correctly mentioned at the beginning in the interforaminal area. Um, predictability of regeneration uh, in um, implant disease uh, is much lower than the predictability of regeneration uh, protocols applied in natural teas. So um, the replacement of a natural teas, or of a natural tooth by an implant um, requires indeed um, consideration of different other factors. Um, number one, which I would like to emphasize here is 
uh, stay within your limits of knowledge, skills, and uh, abilities. Uh, do not be... Um, do not be worried if you have to refer as a clinician a case out to a specialist. Uh, do um, you know that the statistics, um, the statistics in the U.S. Um, show that uh, the vast majorities or more than half of the root canal treatments are performed by clinicians, uh, same as um, uh, secondary root canal treatments, also the, the vast majority is performed by, uh, by, by the general practitioners. Uh, I, uh, if you have a, a non-vital case, do not be worried to refer the case out. Uh, the specialist will, will send you the case back and you will be able to build and, and, and continue the treatment and the care of your patient uh, in your practice. Um, so, um, Consider the consideration which has to be given uh, when, uh, when the decision making has to be performed to save or to extract, uh, much more teeth can be saved uh, than uh, it is the case today. Uh, implant is, uh, implantology is there just not as an alternative for uh, the decision making protocol uh, to treat or not to treat or to, or to extract the tooth, but the implant has been established as a, or has been introduced as a tool um, in a case where teeth are indeed missing, in a case where uh, the support for, um, for the restorative dentistry is not given. So um, implant, implant the imp implant dentistry is not a competitor for endodontics. Uh, it is a different, um, it is a complete different instrument uh, in the armamentarium in the hand of, of, uh, of the dentist. So um, dentistry, dentistry uh, allows um, for, uh, or has sufficient, has sufficient uh, work uh, uh, to be granted for the for the for the clinical practitioner for the specialist either for the specialist in endodontics or the implantologist for the periodontolo for periodontology so the work together will be much more beneficial for the for the for the um, clinician for the patient out there and basically what we owe we owe the service to the patient and uh, because uh, we are privileged to be allowed um, to heal and to treat uh, so um, we should um, fulfill this uh, uh, this task and um, not make the choice uh, as simple to save or to extract. You know, a lot of times uh, a kid will learn something simple in dental school, like the final restoration of every tooth with a root canal should be a crown. And that probably makes sense on a lot of the molars. But when you get into the lower uh, incisors, when you get done uh, performing a root canal and then with a constricted cingulum neck, you prepare that for a crown, there's just literally nothing left of the tooth. I mean, if you've cleaned it out, for the root canal, you file it down for the crown. Do you really think the mandibular four incisors after a root canal should be crowned? Or would you, uh, what would your coronal restoration advice be for the four lower incisors? Um, understand, understanding uh, mechanics, understanding forces available, uh, diagnostic of um, the chewing patterns of the individual patient. Um, habits like para, para functioning habits. Um, all these are um, the criteria which have to be first um, analyzed prior to deciding the, the kind of restoration uh, Given or the kind chosen for the four anterior uh, for the four uh, for uh, the anterior incisors lower incisors. Um, I believe that also also oral hygiene has to be uh, has to be uh, considered. Uh, I am not among the advocates of um, 
those advocates of saying that every root canal treated tooth um, has or requires a caspal coverage. Uh, I believe that the tools available today in our hands uh, with um, adhesive dentistry are superb and they are granting um, excellent long-term success, uh, success rates um, if correctly chosen, correctly applied. Um, you can even use um, uh, prepped or non-prepped veneers. Um, for the restoration, yes, I, I am fully in. I, I am fully. Uh, I am uh, agree. I'm in agreement with yourself when you say um, I would like. I would prefer to be paid for the amount of tooth structure I save than for the amount of tooth, tooth structure I remove. Well said. I would rather be paid for the amount of tooth structure I save than being paid for the amount of tooth structure I remove. And it's true. You'll see people with a worn down dentition and to save their worn down dentition, they file down all the teeth for a crown. I mean, it's uh, and sometimes you wonder if money's the answer, what's the question? Correct. Uh, yeah. So what, uh, what other advice would you, um, um, you, you talked a lot about chemical disinfection, uh, the coronal sealing, uh, the apical sealing, uh, is there on the apical sealing, um, what is your favorite sealer? Uh, you said adhesive sealers. Do you have yeah. brands that you like? Is there well, some brands better than others? Uh, now I expo Now this is a question which um, I, I will I, I will answer this question um, honest. Uh, I know I expose myself tremendous by answering this question honestly. Um, I have participated from the beginning. Um, I worked with the first prototypes and I was asked to um, evaluate the first prototypes of um, a material which um, is now, um, the verdict has been kill it, uh, it was Resilon. Uh, I, um, and what was the company that sold Resilon? Yeah. The first, the, the manufacturer of Resilon, uh, the manufacturer, uh, the initial manufacturer of Resilon was uh, Pentron. Then it went to Cybron Endo, and uh, basically Resilon was, um, over the last couple of years, um, a product uh, pr produced, manufactured, and distributed by Cybron Endo. Um, other companies as well um, had the, the same, the, the, the product were allowed as uh, un, on their own uh, uh, names to sell it, but the manufacturer basically and the, the, the patent was, uh, were owned by Pentron, um, a company which, were, which was then uh, uh, bought by, by Kerr, uh, Cybron Endo, and so on. And, uh, then, and then that's owned by Danaher. Danaher owns Kerr yes. and Cybron. Yes, yes. But sadly, sadly, the material, uh, uh, the company has decided due to the fact that uh, uh, the sales were not uh, satisfactory, the material has been now uh, taken off the market. Uh, for me, this material, um, and I'm not the only one, who um, well from the beginning I the protocol the the protocol of use uh, which I have suggested uh, was somehow different to the protocol of use uh, suggested by the manufacturer and by the um, U.S. opinion leaders. And um, interesting wise, I will not uh, give any names, but I met uh, some of those opinion leaders um, in the last two years. And I was, I enjoyed when they came to me, they approached me and they said, um, we should have followed uh, your, uh, your, your application or uh, your protocol and uh, that way we wouldn't have uh, killed the material. Um, it, it was said that there was this monoblock, uh, this monoblock idea, which of course you cannot have a monoblock, uh, a monoblock uh, uh, in the root canal. But indeed, the 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 um, uh, tribology and um, of this of this material, especially in 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 the. Uh, um, a three-dimensional root canal obturation approach was a fantastic material. 
Sadly, uh, it is taken off the market. Um, today, everyone is trying to uh, jump onto the bandwagon or bandwagon of this uh, of bioceramic uh, of bioceramic uh, 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 MTA like materials. Um, I am not. I'm. I'm still not convinced that this is uh, the solution. So basically, we are now um, at the limit of. From, of the, at the limit where, at the border where we are looking into new technologies, new materials, new approaches, um, it is quite it it, it 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 is a challenging time for 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 the root canal obturation uh, for the root canal obturation currently. Well, um, if there's some kid listening to this right now and she's 25, she just got out of dental school. And she's asking you what type of, what brand of sealer should she use? What would you tell her? I cannot answer with the suggesting one brand. Can you give her a class of brand or, or multiples or what, what advice uh, would, would you give her? I, I okay, can't... Let, let, me, let me ask you this. When I got out of school, Everyone pretty much they don't they only had one sealer. It was Grossman cement yeah. uh, <laughs> That was, that was just, and uh, and then the next big thing was uh, AH 26 uh, So so what was so first of all, what do you think of the uh, the ancient? Grossman cement and then the next generation the H 26. I mean either I mean it, she's asking a question what sealer would you use? You got to answer her somehow um, Yes um, I would Number one, I would suggest um, don't trust um, single cone technique. Uh, I would suggest a three-dimensional root canal obturation, um, lateral condensation. Um, imagine an ashtray, uh, an ashtray, and um, you are. Uh, putting your cigarettes into an ashtray, you can put a lot of cigarettes in this ashtray and you will still have gaps in between. Uh, these gaps now you will want to fill with a sealer, um, you will still have uh, porosity and you will still have gaps. So lateral condensation, um, I, would, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't suggest. A single cone technique, um, again, this is an approach where um, in a, in a, in a um, curved canal, um, you will have areas where you will have direct contact of the cone with the, uh, with the, uh, with the uh, root canal and no sealer in between. Now, um, if you have an, an, a three-dimensional root canal obturation material, what you will have, you will end up, for example, if you are using uh, the classic epoxy, re epoxy resins like AH plus uh, or similars, um, you, your intention is to have an adhesive joint. Um, Guta Percha is uh, uh, there is no adhesive joint between gutta percha and uh, um, and an epoxy resin. Um, if you go and do your uh, vertical condensation technique, you will have you will end up with a mixture of gutta percha and um, and sealer. Um, if you do the very same using gutta percha and uh, and 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 an, an MTA like material, you will again end up with a mixture of uh, um, of gutta percha uh, of a hard cone with implementing sealer in between. So, um, as you can see, we do not really have an optimal material. Of course, the new uh, MTA like materials have the big benefit of a very high biocompatibility. So if biocompatibility bio is your main goal, then yes, stick to a stick to a MTA like material in combination with uh, 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 with gutta percha. So um, some dentists still like the warm gutta percha, like the Obtura system. Uh, um, they like, you know, the 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 flowable 
in, instead of a cone, instead of lateral condensation. Do you think um, warm gutta percha, condensing warm gutta percha is better than a single cone and lateral condensation? And do you recommend that? Uh, the answer defini is definitive yes. And what percent of the endodontists, I believe there's uh, 4,000 endodontists in the United States. I don't know how many are in Germany and Europe, but what percent of endodontists do you know use warm gutta percha as opposed to lateral condensation versus single cone? Uh, I know, for example, that in Germany, some universities continue to teach lateral condensation at an underground le uh, uh, undergrad level. Uh, there are, uh, in the UK, uh, there is a university where I know that lateral condensation is taught even at a postgrad level. Um, in the US, a warm, warm vertical condensation uh, is probably um, the uh, tool uh, or the technique used by, uh, by specialists in endodontics. Um, I believe that it is just an, an estimation. We, I, do not, I do not owe any numbers, but probably more than half of the specialists will use uh, a warm vertical condensation approach. Okay, well, that hour, our hour is up, and I, I want to stay close to the hour because now it's 11 o'clock p.m. in Germany. I'm, uh, you're probably going to be mad at me in the morning when you wake up uh, being <laughs> tired, but I want to say that uh, I'm a big fan of you. Uh, Ken Sirota is a big fan of you. Uh, I have so many of my ended on his friends. I uh, could not believe that I was lucky enough and fortunate enough to be interviewing you all the way from Germany. Your, your resume, you couldn't even read your whole resume. It'd be like reading a book. And uh, I just think that, uh, thank you so much for all that you've done for dentistry around the world from Roots and Ozone and all the things you've published. Uh, uh, you're a legend and it was an extreme honor for you to spend an hour with me today on my podcast. Thank you so much. Thank you very much indeed as well. All right. I'm honored. I'm honored. I, I'm honored to have been interviewed by you. And I'm sure you'll sleep well tonight after the, this late interview. Good night. Thank you. Good night.